I've got a lot of cinema lenses, but this series of lenses might be my very favorite. They're sharp, they're incredible in low light, and they give some of the best background blur of any lenses I own. They're also surprisingly affordable. And in full disclosure, this lens was sent out to me for the purpose of making this video, but all opinions are my own, and this is not a paid or sponsored video. And there are four different lenses in this series of cinema lenses. This one is the 35 millimeter T1.05. There's also a 12 millimeter, a 25 millimeter, and a 50 millimeter lens. And my personal favorites are the 35 millimeter and the 25 millimeter. And if you're only gonna buy one of the lenses from this series, it should be one of these two lenses. And I will circle back at the end of the video and kind of help you determine which of these lenses is the right one for you. The 35 millimeter T1.05 lens is a crop sensor lens made for APS-C cameras, but it does have a little bit of a magic trick. And that is that it works on full frame cameras as well. Probably the headline feature of this lens is that T1.05 maximum aperture or maximum opening in the lens. That lets a whole lot of light in. That does a couple of things for us. First, it makes this lens incredible in low light conditions. It makes it an absolute low light beast. But it also makes it incredible for subject separation and isolating your subject with a blurry background. So you're able to isolate a subject with this lens in a way that you really can't with other cinema lenses out there. If this talk of T-stops is confusing, just know that T-stops in cinema lenses is very similar to F-stops in photography lenses. It just determines how much light hits the sensor and how blurry your background is going to be. And this lens having a T-stop of T1.05 makes it one of the most blurry background or low light performing cinema lenses that has ever been made. And certainly it is the cheapest T1.05 lens that I have ever come across. And the first thing that you should be asking with a lens that goes to T1.05 is how sharp is it? Because this is a consistent problem with these lenses that have these huge maximum openings. But this lens is incredibly sharp, straight from T1.05. You can stop it down to T1.4 if you want a little bit more sharpness, but I think it works excellent at T1.05. And most of the images you're gonna see in this video have been shot at T1.05. And when we're talking about sharpness on a cinema lens like this, we're really only looking at eight megapixels, not 24 megapixels or 33 megapixels like we might evaluate on a photography or a photo lens. And that's because 4K video is only eight megapixels. So on a cinema lens like this, the ability to resolve anything beyond about eight megapixels or 6K video is really unnecessary. A high quality cinema lens is generally designed to give a slightly lower contrast image and a slightly more natural looking image. And you will definitely find that with these lenses. And when you compare the images you're getting out of these lenses to a photography lens, which has really been designed to have a high contrast image and an attempt to resolve a 24 or 33 or even up to a 50 megapixel image, you're going to see that the images coming out of this lens are far more natural and far more cinematic. The other thing we need to keep in mind is when we're looking at a lens like this and we're looking at the sharpness and detail in the center of frame or whatever we're focusing on, our eyes are actually trying to determine the difference between what is sharp and detailed in focus and the out of focus backgrounds. So this lens renders some incredibly out of focus backgrounds, which actually makes the image that, or the part of the image that is in focus look even sharper and more detailed. Some of the other lenses that I've tested that have the ability to get a huge background blur like this, I just end up seeing that maximum opening or maximum T-stop really as a bonus mode. And that's because the sharpness and detail often falls away when you open up the iris that wide. But on this lens, I would not hesitate to shoot an entire sequence at T1.05. And when I look at all the features that this lens brings, the one that I absolutely love the most is the quality of that background blur. Because there's no point in having an extremely out of focus background if it's not lovely and soft and creates this beautiful backdrop to what is sharp and in focus in the frame. And I would say throughout this entire series of lenses, they render some of the best background blur of really any lenses I've ever used. Both the 35 and 25 millimeter lens from this series render equally high quality background blur. And importantly, both of these lenses render specular highlights perfectly round and clean 
even when you stop the aperture down. This is something you often won't see even from $50,000 cinema lenses. And I know a lot of people obsess about sharpness and detail, but I think when it comes to cinema lenses, that background blur, and particularly the quality of that background blur, are as important, if not more important, than the sharpness and detail that any of these lenses renders. Looking at the build quality on this lens, this lens is built about as well as any lens you're gonna come across. You've got an all metal body, you've got a metal lens cap, you've got a metal lens mount, and you've got metal focus and aperture rings. The aperture and focus rings are also geared, so you can use them with a follow focus system for general cinema use, like you would put in a cinema rig. But I've just shot everything handheld, and I've just done the focus and the aperture myself by hand. And I think some people are afraid of manual focus, but if you buy a lens that has dedicated manual focus, you're actually moving the glass elements in the lens when you are manually focusing. This is nothing like trying to do a manual focus with a focus by wire for a modern mirrorless lens now. And I actually find focusing with this lens very, very easy, and I find focus pulls very smooth and easy to achieve. Almost all modern mirrorless cameras now come with a couple of focus assist features, which make it very easy to use a manual focus lens like this. One of them is called focus peaking, and that just creates a sparkly outline around whatever is in focus in your image. So if you see this little glowing outline around that part of your image, you know that's in focus. The other one is punch and assist, where you just push a little button on the camera, it punches in, you nail your focus, and then you back out and you start recording. And after using these features for a couple of days, I think you will find it very intuitive and actually quite easy to nail manual focus. So even though it's a manual focus lens, all cinema lenses are manual focus. So I don't want you to be scared off just because it's a manual focus lens. The lens is designed to be used on APS-C or crop sensor cameras. But the superpower of this particular lens in the series is that it will cover a full frame camera. Now this is pretty cool because if you've got a full frame camera that's got crop sensor mode, or if you have both a crop sensor camera and a full frame camera with the same lens mount, you're gonna get a 52 and a half millimeter or thereabout field of view if you're using it in APS-C mode. But if you use it on a full frame camera, you're going to get a 35 millimeter field of view. So you're essentially getting two lenses in one. Now, when you are using it on a full frame camera, once you get towards the edge and the corners, it does get a little bit crazy and it is kind of in more of an artistic look, but you are getting full sensor coverage. Keeping in mind, if you have one of these cameras that has clear image zoom or allows you to just crop in a little bit on your full frame sans sensor, you can sort of go in 1.1 or 1.2 times and get rid of some of that craziness and clean it up and still use it as a full frame lens. And here's some examples of the image you will get when using a full frame camera. And you do get a fair bit of vignette at the very corners and at the side of the frame, you do get some significant softening. But if you have a camera with digital image stabilization or some sort of extra digital boost mode, which most of these modern cameras have now, they do crop in somewhere around 1.1 to 1.2 times. And that is just enough to take that kind of craziness out of the corners and the sides. And it does allow you to use this lens on a full frame camera and not worry about cropping in editing. And if you have a Sony camera, you can also use the clear image zoom to achieve the same effect. And so for me, the two outstanding lenses in this vision series of lenses are the 35 millimeter T1.05 and the 25 millimeter T1.05. But which one should you get for your first lens in the series or if you're only going to buy one? Well, this is how I see it. If you have a full frame camera, the fact that the 35 millimeter lens can be used on a full frame camera or a crop sensor camera or used on a full frame camera and then in crop sensor mode on that same camera, you get a two in one package with the 35 millimeter T1.05. But if you're shooting with a crop sensor camera specifically or only, and if you're only after one lens, then I suggest that you get the 25 millimeter T1.05. I'll put links for pricing and availability in the description down below. I will also include any discounts or sales that I know about. And I've just thrown a video on screen now. This is my review of the 25 millimeter cinema lens. And some of the images in that video are some of my favorite of all time.